Hey there guys, gals, and winky pals. This is Erica Oliveira, and today we are watching The Patchwork Girl of Oz. So, let us begin. This was made by the Oz Film Company, the first of the Oz films, made, produced and written by L. Frank Baum. But it was released in September of 1914, part one. A lot of people say, say her face is really creepy. Ojo and Unk Nunky. Ojo, munchkin boy, Unk Nunky, Ojo's friend and guardian. Gives the names names of the actors there. I spent a lot of weekends looking looking like that. And you're gonna find in this movie that it that'll it doesn't really follow the original book very much. It really goes off script, so to speak. It's like Baum was trying to... It was more like he was inspiring. There are no more loaves on the braid tree that grows in our yard. Tell me, Unk Nunky, why are we so poor? You also find that none of the cards at actually are, fr are from the book. None of it's actual dialogue from the book. Let us go to the Emerald City, where there's plenty for all. No one ever starves in the Land of Oz. But to get food, we must go where it is. You'll no you'll notice there's no no sound in the back of this. If I were to guess, I'm sure this was provided in the in the in the movie hall. I'm sure if Baum had his way, he would have added some music. Seems like something he'd do. Classic Baum. I'm sure any parent can relate to this scene. The kid's bored once go out. Who knew the, Dr. Pip, the crooked magician, Margolot, his wife. Dr. Pip has been six years making the magic powder of life. Yeah, that's kind of what working it from home looks like, doesn't it? Oh, it's... I'm tired of doing my own work. Hurry and finish that magic powder and I'll make a servant girl and bring her to life with it. Margulis searches for material to make a servant girl. And this just sounds like slavery with extra steps. Joseva, the magician's daughter, and her sweetheart Danx the Munchkin. Now these two characters aren't in the book. They were just they were created specifically for the movie to to create a romantic subplot. Because apparently every movie need, needs a ro romance, even the very early ones. A little bizarre really, especially for Bomb since in his books he didn't really do m many subplots. That's the outside of Dr. Pip's house. It's a little confusing at first. You don't really see until later 
that's when you're closer up that's what it is this scene you're seeing Margola actually bu building the the patchwork girl you don't see that in the book you in the book she already had had it made made up made the doll make already nor she had six years to build it. Mule, a waif and strayed, Mr. Fred Woodward. Mr. Wood, Fred Woodward was also in a lot, a lot of Bomb's stage productions as well. Whoa. Dude, don't wiggle your butt in front of a child. You can get arrested for that. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Woodward, the world's first furry. And here, here we have Margola finishing up the patchwork girl. She's getting the pieces together. In the book she had six year, years to add a lot of detail. Here apparently she got like an hour. And interestingly enough here she's using magic. In the book she was just a housewife. It, there was never any implication that she was a magician either like her husband. It was probably to show off the use of stop motion, which is used a lot in this movie. The front of the house with all those munchkins dancing makes me think of that mo movie that takes place in Norway with the cult. Anybody else getting that vibe? Leave a comment if you think so. Now we have a finished patchwork girl. And o Ojo and Yonki are at the magician's place. They were going to the Emerald City, so here I'm assuming they were distracted by everything that was going on. It looks like she's trying to figure out what they're doing there, maybe trying to shoo them off. He's begging for food. Oh, just trying to do a cute little kid act. And they appease her. Doesn't seem like the best time though, what with everything going on, but Whoa. No. Yeah, don't drop the creepy mannequin. I mean when you just walk into something like that, you think you don't want a part of it, but they just dive right in. I mean, it I guess it's just a Tuesday in Oz. Now we end of part one. So I wonder what comes next. Part two! That's what it is. Yeah, that's what you get for being a creep. Yeah, Fred Woodward went on to play, play Hank the Mule for a huge chunk of his life. 
Oh no, she has no brains. If your brain's the better servant. Yeah, that's healthy thinking. It's not creepy at all. Good kid. Magic brains. You know, if you see, yeah, if you see these qualities, some of these you can recognize from the book. Like you see at the bottom, you see Posy in the center. That was actually dumped in. In her brain, like judgment. Not sure what that one says. Obedience. Mm, no. Just a tiny bit, barely. Ingenuity. Yeah, uh, gonna pour a bunch of that in. And cleverness. Just gonna dump all that. And okay, yeah, that's good. Now, in in the book, he dumps a little bit of everything in. I'm a, since we don't see him doing that here because it gets we get distracted. Ojo slightly, slightly gives the patchwork girl brains. See. Either we assume or just take it at face value. Either way, we know we know the patchwork girl is going to be, you know, rebel rebel when she comes to life that we all know and love. Yeah, and that Frank Woodward, you creep, <laughs> or whatever you're called. I know you're a whatever. You're just weird. It's interesting how the powder of life is nearly ready. It's interesting how that how that costume works there there's strings on the inside side that work the eyes and ears I guess that means the powder's ready I wonder I wonder if there's a smoke alarm going off you just can't hear it because you know it's it's silent Now with everybody in the way, that's how you know something bad's gonna happen. Yes. That small space, so many people. And here we go. Oh, crud. Got people turned to stone, but we have a living doll. To make more powder of life would mean stirring four kettles with both hands and both feet for six long weary years, and I'm too tired to undertake the task. Oh no. Well, that stinks. But, on the plus side, we got a patchwork girl out of it. It's alive! It's alive! The Patchwork Girl, girl is actually played by a man named Pierre Couderic, an a, a French acrobat. Due to... Due to the... Limited... Role... Due to the... Oh, that bunch of scraps has caused all our trouble. due to the few women who were allowed into the profession. Not many women back then were acrobats. That's, so that's why they had a male acrobat playing her. So, to get liquids for an antidote, they'll need, 
Need three hairs from a woozy's tail, six sleeve clover, and one gill of water from a dark well. This pretty much covers covers what they need from the book. The only thing they're missing is the wing of a yellow butterfly. I will find the dark well. In case you're not sure who's saying that, that's Dr. Pipped. Ojo and Pip's daughter are left with the other two tasks. I hate to go and leave my love here alone, Father. Can't you reduce him in size so I can take poor Danks with me? That's just creepy and kind of a little kinky. Also, this doesn't seem healthy. I mean, you're a little obsessive. I mean, really. I mean, you should probably go see a therapist about that. Do they have therapists in Oz? I mean, Dr. Pip doesn't even exactly seem like he has a doctorate. Ojo and Joseva go to find Woozy and a six sleeve clover. Part 3. For some reason, they have a horde of munchkins following them. Along with the patchwork girl, of course. Dr. Pip, of course, goes on his own. And, of course, they find it humorous that the Petrol Girl is somewhat disemboweling herself. Beware of Woozy. Here we find the Woozy, also played by Fred Woodward. And here we find a lot of similarities in the book. Just like in the book, the woozy is kept kept behind a fence. Here, the patchwork girl actually play, plays it starts to play a more major role in in this part. Well, most the last couple because mainly because she wasn't present. It's the woozy, Mr. Fred Woodward. Mr. You'll notice Fred Woodward plays mo most of the animal role roles in th this in this movie and in plays as well. Well, he was, he had a specialty in animal roles. Well, and he did for most of his life. I see. He tried breaking out into drama a couple times, but he was, ne but he was mostly a comedic act actor who was, who did it, who prof who did his best in pantomime as you can see here in his dance with the patchwork girl. Mr. Woozy, we want three hairs from the end of your tail. Just like in the book, it, the tail has three hair, hairs on it, but they're hard to pull from. That kind of, the only way to get the three hairs is to take the woozy with us. Just like in the original story. Though it's not quite as highlighted here. The, in, the, in the book, Scraps and the woozy become really good friends. And in, I can't climb out, but if you can make me angry, my eyes will flash fire and burn a hole through the fence. Quite frankly, if 
If the Woozy has that ability, you think they wouldn't build build a fence made of wood. You know what I mean? Am I the only one who thinks that? Am I overthinking it? I feel like I'm overthinking it. I wonder what she's doing to, to get him angry. Is she insulting him? Maybe your mama's so fat jokes. Your mama's so fat, she has her own gravitational pull. The woozy is free at last. Hooray! Of course, the munchkins are afraid because they were the ones who put him in a fence to begin with, but he's pretty harmless, so there you go. However, they seem pretty ha happy to ha have him as a companion. So, but as you could hear, this is taken from one of the original Neil illustrations. Or scraps and Ojo are trying to pull pull the hairs off his tail. Well, he's grasping onto a tree. I'm kind of glad they put that in the movie here because it's a really cute image. The arrival of Ginger, the maid from the Emerald City. She's not in this. She's not in the original story. She's she's in. Em She's in Marvelous Land of Oz and Tin Woodman of Oz prevalent, prevalently, but not in in Patchwork Girl. The Wall of Optical Illusion. I'm not sure why she's in a canoe. Is that considered canon? Since Baum wrote this, is it canon that Ginger Wright can drive a canoe? I'm, co I'm considering it canon. Let the record show it's canon. Ginger falls in love with the statue of Dax. That's also kind of unhealthy. This is the whole thing with the miniature statue, with the with the boyfriend in her pocket thing is just really unhealthy. Like an Adonis type of thing. You see the wall, but it's not there, and I can prove it. Now this is taken from Marvelous Land with all of Mombi's illusions, walls of fire and flowers and such. Who knew there were so many palm trees in Oz, huh? Funny enough, even though the, the film manufacturing company was, had its head offices in... Oh, take care of... It's against the law, law of Oz to plug a six-leaf clover. Even though the main, op, main headquarters was in Hollywood, the soldier with the green whiskers guards the gate of the Emerald City. The films were made. The film was ma mainly done done in San Diego. And this guy is about as competent as a fake security camera. Now he's just gonna pretend he's busy, pretend he's at work. Ojo breaks the law. He's gonna. He's not gonna worry about the police here. And you, you can tell Gin Ginger has something planned. That girl yonder has stolen the sixth leaf clover. And she means Pip's daughter. She's gonna frame her so she can steal the statue. Because apparent, because apparently eligible men are that are that scarce in Oz, or Ginger's just that thirsty. 
kind of want to know what she does with that statue. That's going to be nasty. That statue belongs to me. Yeah, that's... Yeah, and this guy is not equipped for this. The Royal Barracks. Yeah, those are just nice barracks. Looks like a harem. The Guardian of the Gate. This guy's like, what the heck? This guy's like not doing anything and all of a sudden he's just like It's going He doesn't even do anything with it's a guardian. He's just mm -hmm. sitting there. Mm -hmm. The soldier beset by the munchkins rings the great alarm bell. Which is apparently made of paper mache. And it needs to be pushed by a fairy even though I saw a a rope to pull it. <laughs> apparently the, the barracks are double as a harem. That looks way too nice. End of part three. Next we have part four, or as I like to call the most unnecessary part of the story, of the movie. Yeah, that guardian the gate is like doesn't do anything. He literally sits there and he plays what is what is that a mouth harp? Yeah. Here's the part where they get arrested. All the munchkins and Ojo, the woozy. You have to get the army involved. See, the Guardian just, like, sucks so bad at his job, they, they have to get him to do something. It's like, oh, what? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um... Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the garb of a royal prisoner. Here they cover him... Cover him with with ghost sheets like they do in the book except instead of just Ojo it's everybody including all the munchkins that he traveled with which again I'm still not sure why they went that direction because they're pretty useless to the story even the poor woozy didn't do anything the patchwork girl gets the statue of Nanx Yeah, this whole subplot, it's just them keep playing keep away with the statue and, like, every woman in, in the city, like, falling in love with the statue. And it's, it's kind of messed up. Yeah, we need more, yeah, we need more of this. The patchwork girl does not recognize her friends in their prison garb, but we need more patchwork girl. She plays a very minor role in her own movie. But we need more, more of her doing flips.
but our hiding place is very effective. She got the statue away from that thirsty ginger. Dr. Pip, seeking a dark well, comes to the House of Magic. In the original text, it's Ojo and Scraps who find, find the House of Magic. A, a house that, that accommodates, accommodates its guests with, with a bed, bed and food for the night. This seems actually quite impressive with its use of stop motion. Motion with see the ha you see the house actually making itself up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, most of us in this situation would be like, it's like, okay, either, I'm not staying here because I might die, but kind of fishy. Gives off some demonic vibes, but it is Oz. Eight hours later. The Lonesome Zoop. Also played by Fred Woodward as well. Looks more like a monkey to me, but who am I to judge? A very creepy monkey from a Dr. Dr. Seuss book. Don't stop. <laughs> that is beyond creepy. Yeah, par apparently all the furries in this movie, apparently all the furries are creepy in Oz. Did you at least leave a tip, buddy? I wonder who... Well, both of the, these were supposed to be played by Fred Woodward, so I wonder who played the other. This way to Hopper Town, only hoppers allowed. Ooh, this is... Oh, things are going to get dark here. It... Ginger, you're so thirsty. I'm going to call you Ginger Ale. Hopper Town. I'm 
trying to remember if the hoppers were one of the tribes that live underground in Oz. Perhaps, or maybe not. They may have been near the hot tunnels. You have one leg too many. The law of the hoppers obliges me to cut off the extra one. Yeah. Yeah, because who doesn't like a little light surgery? The patchwork girl in her flight overtakes Dr. Pitt. That's... How small is Oz? Spare my master. Take my leg instead. Talk about a small world. We had it. Ooh. Well, that's what you get. Did you reel? That's easily written. That's easily written. The Jolly Taunton Hots. Which apparently are... If, which act like groundhog people even though it, this part is not okay to today's standards. Because you can... I don't have to tell you why. We all know. We all know. Yeah, yeah this would be censored now. Ginger recovers the statue of Danks. Seriously, she doesn't. Yeah, the, this subplot gets really old. Really fast. End of part four. Thank God. Here we have part five. I even here's where things start to pick up. First we have the we have the woozy, we have the the clover. This is where we get the gill of water. Do you know where there is a dark well? asked Dr. Pip. Sure, said the Horners. We have a fine dark well in our lower caverns. Okay, here we have, Yeah, so here are the Horners. Now this is a fun little effect, simple yet effective. Walk up the fence, it's easy. It's rather silly, but again, really effective and quite cute for this story. The incline leading to the dark well. Whee! It actually looks like fun. I would totally do that. I'd be happy too if it, if it meant doing no more of those shenanigans. You know, when I first saw this, I, one of the first facts I learned was that this had a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was mostly from critics writing, just writing personal reviews. But now I'm kind of just start, starting to see why, though I'm sure back, back then it was pretty revolutionary. 
I can kind of see now why, though, with modern audiences. The throne room of Ozma of Oz. So here's where everything comes together. I feel like feel like that bare rug on the on the floor is actually a reference to to the living bear rug rug from let's see, I believe it was Road to Oz. Does that sound right? So everybody, everybody's filing in. If you look on the very far right, you see the Cowardly Lion. That's actually played by Hal Roach. You recognize him as the producer of the Laurel and Hardy franchise and the Little Rascals. Here we have Ozma of Oz. You'll recognize her from the very beginning. I think just her face. Yeah, the Royal Soldiers again. Yeah, they gotta get in there quick. The Wizard of Oz. Here he comes. Guess they're not gonna point out that he's an actual wizard now. And here are the prisoners. They're unmasked. Your Highness, these are the prisoners who stole the six-leaved clover. Here's where they're going to be put on trial. They don't explain here why, but in the book, it's because... It's because six leaf clovers can be used for magic and a lot of and magic is banned in Oz because it can be used for ill intent by the wrong people oh and there's the woozy summon the royal jury here's the tin woodman we'll start we'll see the scarecrow there he is this is the first and only time this is the first we'll see them see the jury on the far right you're gonna see a totten hot royal jury confers see on the far right is is a totten hot that's actually played by Harold Lloyd in one of his earliest roles recognize reckon this is you'll recognize him from his later silent films Now, I've only been on a jury one time, but I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to just wander, to walk away and wander off. I mean, am I right on that? Pretty sure. I mean, it, I mean, I mean it's a scarecrow, but I'm, I mean, so it's kind of classic him, but still. Whoa. And hello. Now, this is a subplot, romantic subplot I would not mind seeing. And the ship has sailed. Still a better love story than Twilight. Just get in there. There, you know you need to make make that stuff. I found the dark well. I'm 
not sure how he's able to pull, pull off the hair's not that woozy if, if two people couldn't do it before. I didn't see a knife or scissors there. Have mercy, gentle ruler, and permit, permit me to restore the statues to life. Yeah, they're laying it on thick here. Hey, <laughs> you can see you can see the wizard's ball cap. Let the magician perform his magic if he can. I command you, wizard, to bring the statues here in my presence. Here we go. Here are two of the statues. The third is missing. And there, Ginger has it. Here is the third statue, said Dr. Pipped. Soldier, arrest that girl. No, my precious. <laughs> I've seen, I've never seen that healthier relationships. Akio Potion. Uh, Avada. See, Avada Kedavra. <laughs> You're alive. I bet that would have been really confusing. Like, why am I tiny? Imagine having to explain to him what happened during that whole time, like why he woke up tiny. Reunited. And it's a happy ending for all. And there's Osmond again. The end. Well, thanks for sticking with me throughout this commentary of the Patchwork Girl of Oz from 1914. That if you want to hear more videos, either from me or from uh, others for con news, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you, and see you next time.